Mr. Frakes here. And I'm Dave, and we've got a new segment for you. That's right. We have now decided we shall declare the top five games in various consoles. Except we're going to have two top fives, one for each of us, and we aren't going to claim that these are the top five lists of all time either. We know we'd get lots of hate if we said these were the best ever games, so these are our personal top fives derived from a combination of nostalgia and overall quality, and also based on what games we have and haven't played. So if you have games you think we've left out, let us know. Well... Let's get started. We are going to alternate between our two top five lists, and we'll start with my number five pick, Tecmo Super Bowl. This game is mostly on my list based on memories and nostalgia. I used to play this game a ton back in the NES NES days, and it most likely is one of my most played games of all time. The game does have its drawbacks with silly AI play calling and unrealistic play, but it has so much character that it easily overcomes these things, at least for me. The game has a rather exciting pace to it and has a ton of little fast cinematics during the play that really make the game come to life. The music, although not spectacular, gets you into it as well, and the voice that it says touchdown every time we score is nice as well. All of these things give the game character and still to this day it makes the game stand out to me far above those throw away and buy new sports titles that they release every year. When I play this game, I generally can't help but say woot constantly. The atmosphere Metroid gives off was completely unmatched at the time and made you feel incredibly alone. And that's a good thing. And what about the mind blower of an ending where you find out you've been playing as a chick the entire time? Great stuff. For my number four pick, I'm going with Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. Now the other reason why this beats out Mario 3 is because it comes with Duck Hunt on the same cartridge. Some of you might say stuff about them being two different games, blah, blah. but for my purposes they are one cartridge and therefore connected as one game. This is the first game I ever remember playing, and I remember all the things that went on it seemed crazy and awesome when I was little. Like bashing turtles, breaking blocks, and throwing fireballs. Looking back at the game now, it isn't nearly as fun, and it is a rather mediocre game at best. Most simply because no matter how hard I try, I can't beat it. I can almost never get past the hammer throwing guy in World 5. Um, but that aside, when you throw Duck Hunt into the mix, I simply can't leave this game out of the list. I still keep my NES hooked up to play Duck Hunt, and a light gun is just plain cool. Nowadays we have much fancier things, but there's still nothing like shooting them ducks down. While I don't think the music of Mega Man 2 is amazing, it is the best of the series, however. And that's the main reason I picked this over the other games. The bosses are more interesting, the levels are crazier, and even headache-inducing at times, but it definitely showcases what the NES could do back in the day. My number three pick is Punch-Out! Punch-Out, or also known as Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, for me is one of the most memorable sports games I've ever played, where almost every other sports game is filled with faceless, generic players or lame copies of real people. This game is filled with characters that have their own personalities, and this really gets you into the path of becoming a champion and makes the game stand out, especially amongst the NES titles. Each fight is unique and is like an in-depth boss fight where you have to figure out their patterns and when and how to attack to win. You also have to have excellent timing to figure out when exactly to attack and when to dodge. All these things come together to make a game that is very memorable to me and fun where many other NES games are memorable and not fun. That is why it is my number three pick. This is one of my main pick up and play games on the NES. It's just one of those fun games where you can play it any time and quickly get into it. But for a pick up and play type, it actually has depth. 
The swing mechanic is one of the most fun things ever invented in a video game, and who doesn't love the cinematic at the end? For number two, I'm going to go with the first Zelda game, The Legend of Zelda. I obtained this game quite a time after I played Link to the Past, and I mostly took the effort because at the time, A Link to the Past was my favorite game. Now the reason why I won't put this game as my number one pick is simply because it is highly unpolished. The controls for me are constantly doing things I didn't want them to, and the dungeons are far from feeling unique. Some of the bosses are just plain lame, and overall you just plain feel lost playing the game. The game still though can be quite entertaining as you get into it, and the more you play it, the more it seems to pick up. There's a ton of stuff to do in the game, and for a NES game, that is saying a lot. Finding all the items and going through the dungeons, although highly imperfect like I have said, still stands out a lot when you compare it to most other NES titles. So although I find this game extremely lacking in many areas, it still has a charm for what game mechanics it introduces, and is an easy pick for the number 2 spot. While many people write this game off into the Simon's Quest category, The Adventure of Link is responsible for starting one of my favorite genre of games, the side-scroller platform RPG. Sure, it's difficult, sure it's different than the first game, but it's sure as hell fun to play. Except for Death Mountain, Fuck that place. And the Maze Island, Fuck that place too. Where I found Zelda lacking in many areas, I find that Star Tropics has patched up the rough spots. Star Tropics is very similar to Zelda, but in my opinion it is more similar in quality to A Link to the Past, and has polished more along the lines of a SNES game. It gives you an actual storyline, and it's usually clear what to do next. You might say that it is too linear, but when compared to other NES games, I don't think it is too bad, and I'd rather have a linear game than one that leaves you clueless. It also might not have all of the items and tools that Zelda has, but generally I find that the stronger gameplay and the more interesting bosses makes up for this. Overall though, I'd say that the thing that really helps this game is that it really stands out with its unique premise. I can't think of any other game where you traverse dungeons with a yo-yo as your weapon and defeat aliens. Most of all, it stands above most NES games in that it's still fun even now and has no glaring problems that I can immediately think of, which I can't say for any other NES game. I should also say that I do not have Star Traffics 2, so I can't say as to whether that is better or not. My number one NES game wasn't even in question for this list. The original Legend of Zelda is the pinnacle of NES creations and should be in everyone's collection. It's hard to find anything wrong with Zelda, it's almost a perfect game for its time. It's probably the only game on the NES I don't mind grinding at the beginning every single time I play it to get enough rupees to buy what I need. Mine doesn't like saving, however, so I hate the cartridge and the NES console itself. But I love the game. Well, there's both of our top five NES game lists. We hope you like the video. And if you disagree with our choices, we'd like to hear about it. I'm Sir Franks. And I'm Dave. See you next time.